It's July 13th, 2020, and we are probably a year into this greenhouse project. And uh, we got it closed up in, last fall. So we have had an opportunity now to see how this thing would manage the cold temperatures, and we've reported that. And uh, we've now really had an opportunity to see how this thing handles the heat. And I wanted to report on that. Uh, we have seen temperatures as high as 101 out here according to this weather station that we've got. And uh, so how did the greenhouse do? Well, what we found was when it's about 92, 93 degrees, it can maintain temperatures in the mid 80s, which is what we want. But when we get above, say, 93, then we start to creep up into the 90s. And when it was 101 degrees, uh, according to the weather station, and I can see all this on my phone, the, uh, the sensors, this is our ground sensor, this guy was reporting 92 degrees, so it got warm in here. And the highest temperature reading came from the suction room. And that was giving me a 95 degree temperature reading. That suction room is always the warmest spot in the greenhouse. This west wall here where the fans are is, uh, was closer to 92. And then we had another 94, 95 degree reading over on the east end. Furthest from the fans, I thought it would be cool because we've got aquaponics down here. But it warms up down here even with the aquaponics. So that's warmer than we want to be. It's certainly survivable. I'll say that some of the trees, uh, and here's a starfruit tree as an example. We have lost a couple of trees, and I, it may be from my mismanagement, it may be from the dry heat that is circulating through here when we deal with these hot days, and we've had at least a few over 100 degrees. Our normal high is 93 here in Springville but we always get a couple days above 100, and this year it's been extra warm. So, uh, what happens when it gets hot? Of course, we've got the blower in the far corner, that, and you can hear it just coming on, so you'll see these vents open up. But we've got the blower that uh, turns on and circulates air through the pipes. Um, and the other thing that happens that we've now just seen is when it gets to about 84, 85, the fans turn on and run intermittently. And uh, that circulates air, helps us keep things cool. Of course, we've got a shade cloth. It's a 40% aluminette. And we are built below ground, which I really think helps with temperature. We're four feet below grade, and then we backfilled around the perimeter to get us five and a half to six and a half feet above ground. Uh, another thing that we've done while we continue to try to get this greenhouse dialed in, uh, we put in a misting system. And this misting system is set on a timer and it goes on every day when it's hot. I've just got it on auto to turn on. And it'll run for about an hour between one and two. And that helps. I don't know if you can see that. But the misting system is on. The fans are blowing, so it's kind of blowing the mist. But what I found is when the misting system goes on, the fans are intermittent rather than running all the time on hot days. So the misting system is clearly helping. And uh, it's also helping get a little more moisture in here when it's circulating dry, hot heat. You can see the fans just went off. Hopefully you can see that. I actually put two misting systems on. They were really inexpensive. The first misting system had nozzles that just kept clogging. The second one's doing a much better job of not clogging. You can hear, I don't know if you can hear that blower running in the far corner. So the misting system helps. Uh, another thing that I think really helps is we really kind of want to focus our tomatoes over on the south side while the trees are growing up because it kind of helps us dapple the light as they grow up along that big window. Uh, these tomatoes are just going nuts. This is a sun sugar variety here. But uh, tomatoes do very well in here, needless to say. 
Other than that, um, I'll show you one interesting thing. We put some rafts on top of the pond here to plant um, herbs and greens. Look at those roots. Just going nuts. Uh, some things are working well in here, others are struggling. Spinach has been a struggle for me. If anybody has any suggestions on how to make the spinach work, I would love your feedback. Um, the lettuce, the basil, the herbs do really, really well. Here again is some spinach and it's just struggling. And I know that's my fault. So anyone who recognizes or has suggestions, love to hear it. But I would say with the heat and, and the temperatures, the greenhouse is doing pretty well. I'm happy with it. We'll continue to work on getting this thing so that it's uh, keeping temperatures below 90. That's our goal. It'll probably take us a few years, but we'll get there. Other thing I guess I'd mention, the geothermal, this is a geothermal greenhouse. I've mentioned a couple times that we have some pipes that we think are cl clogged with water. They're solid pipes, but we think they've still taken on water. Uh, geothermal does really help us manage the temperature, but it cannot keep up with this big window uh, letting in all of that light and heat. So these other cooling methods I think are really resourceful to use in these geothermal greenhouses when they're new and hopefully after a few years as, as we uh, get taller trees and uh, a more mature greenhouse, we will uh, get it working so the geothermal can manage it, but we're not there yet. So that's just a quick update today. Talk about that heat that we're dealing with and um, see the plants for the most part are doing really well. The trees are doing well. That's the update for now.